So the other day I was out shopping for vinyl records because I love records, love the sound. If I buy any kind of format of music, that's what I choose. I choose to buy vinyl records. Not a big fan of CDs. They sound good and all, but they're just so delicate and I just, I don't know, I just don't really care for them. I think they feel kind of flimsy. And when it comes to digital music, I really like DVD audio and Blu-ray audio is of course really good. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with MP3s, too, if they're uh, encoded correctly. Anyhow, I found something really cool, or at least I think it's really cool, and I wanted to show it to you. But before I show you that, I'm going to show you some other audio formats. Here's a reel-to-reel, -reel, and that's uh, Spike Jones and Stereo. Really cool album. I like this album. And if you're uh, not familiar with reel-to-reels, they look like this. And uh, basically the concept is you have one reel that has the music on it and then you have what's called a take up reel right next to it on the player that takes up the tape from this reel thus being called a reel to reel player. Here's uh, Meet the Beatles on reel to reel. A really cool reel. I'm sure not a lot of you have seen the Beatles on reel to reel before. Reel to reel was really commonly used in the studio back in the day long before they had like digital recordings like DATs and stuff like that and I really like reel to reel really really warm analog sound to them I really enjoy them of course those are stereophonic reel to reels I also have quadraphonic reel to reels which you know stereophonic is two separate channels oh, well first you got mono uh, mono uh, of course is one channel mono of course meaning one stereophonic is two channels and quadraphonic is four channels of course it's not all that cool nowadays because we have like dvd and blu-ray audio that consists of anywhere from 5.1 to like 7.1 uh, channels and you know that's even cooler the point one of course is your uh, base channel for your subwoofer anyhow <laughs> to move on to other analog tape formats you have a track tapes and uh, there's um, here's Beatles um, Sergeant Peppers on a track and here is um, excuse me Black Sabbath Master of Reality and here's uh, Master of Reality by Black Sabbath with an alternate cover as you can see the uh, <laughs> crazy looking hippies on the cover there um, personally I don't care for 8 tracks I don't know if this is a fact or not but this is what I heard from an era collector is that originally 8 tracks were made by some really rich dude uh, he came up with the idea for him because he wanted some kind of uh, porti uh, portable music that he could listen to inside of his boat when he went fishing uh, I don't know if that's true or not. You'll have to look it up. <laughs> but uh, I don't like 8-tracks. They're really flimsy, always breaking and getting aid all the time. Like, uh, like there's like four different channels on uh, four different, they call them programs. There's four different programs on 8-tracks. And there's only fast forward. So say you wanted to listen to Sweet Leaf on program one here, but you're on After Forever part one you would have to fast forward to the end of program one and then go back to program one in order to get to the beginning <laughs> and so I just I don't really like the concept of eight tracks at all I think they suck but anyhow you also have these which is you know just your standard cassette tape really popular in the 80s get and they got phased out pretty much in the 90s when uh, CDs started going down in price of course CDs came out in 1983 but they didn't really, you know, catch on until like the late 80s, early 90s when the price started dropping on them. Because when CDs first came out, they ran like 30, 40 bucks a piece. And in 1983 dollars, that's quite a bit. And even by today's standards, you know, 40 dollars for an album is, is unheard of. But, you know, this is what a cassette tape looks like, of course. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. I used to have a really big collection of cassette tapes. And I used to think that these kicked ass and I still don't think they're too bad I listen to them in my car every now and then because I have one of those radios that has a CD player and a cassette player on it so I don't know I like them still but anyhow I came across these and 
when I seen these, it just like completely blew my mind. I'm like, what the hell are those things? You know, because if you look at the boxes, the boxes actually look really similar to reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape boxes, about the same size, height-wise, uh, but uh, the reel-to-reels clearly uh, are bigger in width. But anyhow, when you open these up, this is what tripped me out. You have like this huge cassette tape, and I was just like looking at that and thinking, what the heck, man? When I found this, I felt like I found the missing link in evolution. <laughs> I was just like, wow, look at that give you a close-up here um, it has like the same kind of mechanism that a VC VCR tape has where it locks into place it won't let it move when it's not uh, being played it has like a little thing that it pushes in to uh, relieve the tension on it to make them go uh, just like like I said like VHS tapes uh, whereas like uh, cassette tapes doesn't don't have that they'll move freely even if they're not being played <laughs> But, uh, yeah, when I saw this, I just, like, freaked out. And I was just like, wow, that is so cool. And here's the other one. And it's like, uh, I looked them up. And apparently, they were made by RCA. And they only lasted from 1958 to 1964. So if you're an audiophile and, you know, or an audio collector or whatever, uh, <laughs> these are like antiques, and these are kind of hard to come by. I've never seen them up until just the other day, and so I'm thoroughly impressed with them. Unfortunately, the thrift store that I shopped at, or got them from, uh, marked two bucks a piece on them, which I think is really dumb. It's like, man, can't you just use a price tag? <laughs> but I was really impressed to find these. Um, RCA apparently discontinued them because... Uh, they were having trouble getting enough players made for them. And they're actually, you know, of course the predecessor to cassette tapes. You can see the similarity there. But anyhow, I haven't listened to these yet because I don't have a player. And I've actually never seen a player before. But if anybody out there has a player for these and uh, can tell me about them, like what they think about them and everything, I'd really be interested to hear about it. Or if anybody is looking for either of these albums, let me know. We'll work out a deal. Other than that, I just want to say that I think these are really cool. And, uh, yeah, I just basically wanted to share that with you.